Broadcasting from the historic city of Perth Amboy, where most people get us confused with Santo Domingo, it's the second late program with John Luke Shapiro Christmas Special. Tonight, announcer Dr. Alfred Cressy, late program Christmas carolers, what do you want for Christmas, and much, much more. Featuring Max Aviles, and the rollbacks. And now, Santa's lost elf, John Luke Shapiro! You know, before I begin, I just want to thank everybody that's here for being probably the most fake people in the world. That, that applause is so unreal. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. My name is John Chaparro, and this is our second Christmas special. You know, the last time we did a Christmas special was exactly two years ago. Because we here at the Late Program strive for nothing more than continuity. Two years ago? Consistency at its finest. <laughs> Ew, this is going to be a long one tonight. Um, you know, seeing as how it's the holiday season, to get myself into the Christmas mood, I wanted to cheer myself up. And what I decided to do, I decided to cheer my best friend up. So, that being said, to cheer him up, I took him out. Now I just need to figure out if hitmen accept credit cards. <laughs> it's okay to laugh, don't worry about it. Feel free, to, feel free to indulge me with your laughter, even if it's fake, thank you. Okay, shut up. <laughs> you know, there was a 65-year-old French inventor. He created a pill that can turn the smell of every fart that you make into, listen to this, chocolate-smelling farts. I'm telling you, this is the perfect Christmas gift for your smelly out-of-town relatives after dinner. I mean, Aunt Judy, you know, now she smells like sweet caramel instead of garbage juice and sadness. Or your Uncle Rico now smells of sweet, sweet caramel instead of debilitating alcoholism. <laughs> Can you be any more graceful dropping that cue card? Thank you. Goodness, this is a riot. You know, as the Christmas season rolls along, a lot of politicians like to get on the good sides of people that support them. That being said, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, with his recent tough talk and in-your-face persona, might draw some of the people that support him away from him. Well, that's nothing new, considering the ground under him has had trouble supporting him anyways. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Typical fat joke. Now, it's funny, someone back there who's behind the camera, uh, you know, thinks of him highly than most, that he kind of pointed at me. So I think, I think I'm going to get murdered after this show. This is the warning to everybody. He's coming to kill me. Somebody save me. I made fun of the fat man, and now I'm going to die. <laughs> Boy, we have a lovely program for you here today. We have a ton of stuff for you here going on this afternoon. I hope it's the afternoon. Hopefully we're not transported all the way to midnight. But now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce our late program Christmas carolers because... I want everybody here to get into the Christmas spirit, you know, outside of getting drunk, of course. Thank you for dropping that. I want everybody to get into the Christmas spirit, get into the mood. So, ladies and gentlemen, here are our late program Christmas carolers, Maximino Alviles and J.C. Mattiella. Guys? Okay, so you guys are just going to speak into the camera. And whatever you guys speak have Speaking to the head. camera? Yes, you're going to speak. So I'm going to go up there and no, speak. No, no. You're not allowed to talk. <laughs> Stuck into the camera, whatever Christmas carols you guys know. I hope you guys know some, because if you guys don't, you're just going to embarrass me. Speak into the camera and indulge us in the Christmas spirit, will you? <laughs> Got any? Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm German. <laughs> 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 
Feliz Navidad. <laughs> anything, guys. Anything. At any moment, go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Let's make this Yuletide gay, boys. Come on. A little too, little too gay. <laughs> Don't look at me, look at the camera. Okay, alright, that's enough. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. You guys need help, seriously. Go, go, go get a doctor for that. <laughs> Nobody pays me enough to do this, really. Nobody gives me enough money for this. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. To the show, ladies and gentlemen. I just I I, I find the, the weird that there the three people that are here, we have to force them to clap. Just to add to the atmosphere. It just shows how much people actually give a crap about me. That they don't even want to willingly help me out. Oh, let me add to the atmosphere. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> this guy. Don't patronize me now, Rosemary. I know that. She's the one that hides the bodies and she's here today. Yes. Time to go get that shovel and report her to the cops. All right. Now, before we move on with the rest of the program, uh, follow, uh, like us on Facebook with The Late Program with Jenna Chaparro. Also, follow us on Twitter at The Late Program. Also, you can follow JC at LDrJC. You can also follow Max here at um, Handicap Avenger. He doesn't use it, so don't worry about it. And, I was um, on it the other day. Nobody cares. <laughs> Um, and for us on YouTube, look for Billy Wagner 13 or look for the late program with John Shapiro. Now, Max, let me ask you something. Do you remember the Christmas uh, video we did two years ago? Yes, where I'm like, then <laughs> did some wild things. Like what? Yes. <laughs> well, what happened is, remember, we got we got sanctioned by my grandmother, and she wanted us to make a new one. Really? You, yeah, you were here for that, remember? Oh, no, you were too busy high on painkillers for that. So. Hey, OP is a great thing. Yes, opiates are fantastic. So what, what ended up happening was uh, we got, you know, sequestered by my grandmother. <laughs> I love that word, sequestered. And we decided to make another Christmas video. Now, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with what it was before, we did a Christmas album where Max and I decided to showcase our talents. Our singing talents, of course. Of course, you know, I'm Mariah Carey, and he sings just like Darlene Love, of course, because we just have <laughs> magical voices like, the, like angels up in heaven. I have to be called the new Nicki Minaj. You shouldn't be proud of that. <laughs> so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. John Luke and Max sing the classics 2.0. Maestro! Last time, John Luke and Max broke all of the traditional rules for Christmas music with the hit platinum plated album, John Luke and Max sing the classics. Now, by popular demand from my grandmother, they're back again and ready to make this Yuletide gay and whatever happy emoticons people use nowadays with John Luke and Max Sing the Classics 2.0. John Luke and Max are putting their own magic traditional holiday spins to classic songs like Santa Claus is Coming to Town. 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 She's making a list. She's taking the choice. Gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. Santa. Have a holly jolly. Christmas time is here. Christmas time. Happiness and cheer, I one care. for all. And, and what's this song about? Happy 
I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. I saw mommy kissing Santa They also wrote original and new medleys for the Christmas season, like DUI, the eggnog made me do it. Eggnog made me do it. I was driving down the street. Then the pole pulled me over. And they told me I was over the speed limit. Then I told them the school script and they gave me a DUI. The eggnog made me. <laughs> Santa is short on child support. On the 12th day of Christmas, my government agent said to me, Daddy is late on payments. Hi, Santa. Remember me? <laughs> Remember Felicia back in high school in 1993? <laughs> well, guess what? I'm here! Mommy, I saw Daddy with another Mommy! Mommy, Mommy, Mommy! Mommy, Mommy, Mommy! Guess what? Were you at the mall today? I think I saw you with Daddy! Wait, you weren't with Daddy? Oh, so Daddy was with another Mommy then! She had blonde hair, big makeup on her face, glittery dress on... Mommy, Mommy, Mommy! Let's go say hi to Daddy's new friend! Mommy, Mommy, Mommy! Ah. Uh... And Rudolph the Red-Nosed Drug Mule. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Drug Mule had a very shiny nose, presumably from all the cocaine. And if you ever saw him, you were asked for a dime back. Rudolph, let me get that, let me get that dime back. All of the other reindeers used to laugh and call him names because they were all high. Honestly, has not anyone noticed the words in this song? Well, they never let poor Rudolph joining any reindeer games because he was arrested all the time. Why doesn't anyone get Rudolph some help? Don't call 911 for Rudolph. He's a drug mule. Everyone knows. A dime bag probably popped in the stuff. Enjoy these classic tunes and melodies to show how good these are. Here is a satisfied customer. I like it. So order the John Luke and Max Sing the Classics 2.0. Send your check or money order now. Portions of the proceeds will go to the John Luke Chaparro We Are Broke Foundation. The John Luke Chaparro We Are Broke Foundation. Because guess what? We're broke. Give me your money. So get your CD and order today. Available at Walgreens. Okay, well, just proves that I, Max and I can sing like angels, of course. Just look at this beautiful face and tell me you're, uh, look at my beautiful face and tell me if you think I can't sing. Yeah, little son here, John. <coughs> Shut up. <laughs> by the way, before I move on, I just want to, uh, if you notice by now I have a haircut. Um, I grew out my hair for a year and three months. That's how long I, if you know who I am or you've seen the show before, you see that I had a very long, like, mop top kind of thing. I got my hair cut recently and for some reason everyone seems to, like, be nicer to me now for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I want, to, I want to give a shout out to my barber, Brian. Thank you, whoever did that. If that was a man, I'm going to be very ashamed. Um, uh, I want to give a shout out to my barber, Brian. Uh, dude, that's freaking awesome, man. I mean, you took... I, it, it, he took my hair, and he said, challenge accepted, and he decided to take it full force, and he actually made it look very decent. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. So, now with that being said, and now that you get the marvel in my handsome beauty, of course... <laughs> it's time, you know, every, every Christmas season, of course, there are new toys that come on the market. Some that are interesting, some that are not. But we here at the Late Program get the inside edition on new toys that are coming. I don't know how we do it. My boss has very underground connections. I, uh, I don't know where he gets it from. I guess he has friends in other countries like Cuba, I guess. Um, so we got the in right here in, the, in, this, in my hand. If these weren't real, would I not be able to do this? Oh, come on, people. Goodness gracious. You guys are freaking quiet here. Sheesh. Man, you guys are dull. Oh. 
But what we decided, I, I got I got an advanced copy of some of these, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of the new toys in a bit. We're generically calling new Christmas toys. So I'll give a round of applause for that bit, ladies and gentlemen. I have no idea what that kind of clap is. This, I don't know what this is. So, alrighty. So, our first toy is called My Little Brony. By the way, just so you know, uh, there'll be pictures on there for you in the... Uh, uh, I'm having a brain problem, apparently. There will be pictures for you as you watch this. Unfortunately, we don't have them here now. Uh, the pictures didn't come in the mail yet because you know, the UPS is really bad. So, you at homes, check out your televisions, and you'll see what I'm talking about as I read these. The first new toy is My Little Brony. Give your time to brace yourself for this fantastic new toy. <laughs> Experience My Little Pony through a fan's eyes with My Little Brony doll. Featured with full 5 o'clock shadow, My Little Pony costume, back fat and front fat, and a restraining order from the woman you used to call a wife. <laughs> Accessories sold separately, batteries not included. Nice. <laughs> Our next new toy is called Simon for Dummies. Ever think Simon is too hard? Find it challenging to keep up with the different colored lights? Were you dropped as a baby on your head? Well, we've got the game for you. It's Simon for Dummies! With Simon for Dummies, have hours of fun as all of the colors are the same and the speed of the game is non-existent. Master Simon for Dummies quicker than your friends and become the talk of the town. Simon for Dummies. Max, you played Simon for Dummies, right? How was it for you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. There we go. Simon for Dummies. Coming soon. Order now. Our next toy is... This is for your little your little boy who wants to you know get into action figures. If you want to you want to take this toy and show him how life is, and he'll appreciate it as he gets older. It's called Senior Citizen Spider Man. Give you a moment to let that sink in. <laughs> Ever wanted to see what it's like when Spider Man grows old? Now you can with Senior Citizen Spider Man. Watch as his webs turn to dust, complete with vision helping goggles, a walker, medicine, and life alert bracelet. Senior Citizen Spider-Man will save the day at your local nursing home by changing the food selection, giving everyone underwear, and putting people out of their misery. Just like <laughs> Dr. Kevorkian. Senior Citizen Spider-Man, show your kid what it's like to be old. Accessories sold separately, batteries not included. Next up is 25 to Life Barbie. <laughs> I wrote all these last night, so... Ever wanted to pretend to commit a double homicide, but not want to deal with all those legal issues? Well, now you can with 25 to Life Barbie, complete with regular clothes splattered in blood, smoking gun, and diet pills, along with a complimentary, complimentary, oh my gosh, I can't even get that word right, complimentary jumpsuit for prison, along with attachable prison tattoos and scars. You're living it up like anyone who's committed a crime, except you're not in jail. 25 to Life Barbie, available at your local creepy white van down by the river. <laughs> Thank you for that condescending clopter, Rosemary. By the way, as I mentioned, the person who I mention at the end of every broadcast, Rosemary, the one who hides the bodies, is here. So everybody, fear for your lives now. <laughs> Our next new toy is Grand Jury Toy Playset. Ooh. Ooh. Who cares? <laughs> Ever wonder what it's like to be a part of a grand jury? Well, here's your chance with your own grand jury toy playset. Filled with subpoenas, false testimonies, incriminating and obvious evidence, and fake money to bribe and to be bribed with! You can make conscious and well-informed decisions like seeing a guy getting murdered on the street. Let's not indict him! We have video. Who cares? We're the grand jury. <laughs> Make real touchy race decisions like the real one. St. Louis, New York, whatever. You can act like one. Grand Jury Toy Playset. Who cares about being right, right? Accessories sold separately, subpoenas, and murder weapons not included. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, our last new Christmas toy is Realistic Tonka Toy Truck Set. This Realistic Tonka Toy, toy Set, as you see right here, this realistic Tonka toy set is the must-have for your kid this Christmas season. 
complete with illegal toy truck and company, sleazy repo man, crying children, angry wife, disgraced father, and most importantly, mobsters. Impound lots sold separately. So that is our new Christmas toys for this holiday season. Let's give it up for those Christmas toys this holiday season. I still don't understand why I have to prod you guys to clap. Why is that? Goodness gracious, why is that? Gosh. I'm telling you. Huh? You didn't bribe me. I don't have to bribe you, man. You, I could just put you on a leash and you go anywhere. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I love you, Max. Not in that way, of course. <laughs> I'm going to your car tonight. I don't have a car. Good luck. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to... We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Dr. Alfred Cressy is going to be on the program, ladies and gentlemen. Are you taping now? Yes, I am. Oh, yes. you're taping yeah. now. Welcome. Well, now. Uh, yeah. you've seen him now. My first guest is, uh, he's the announcer of the program. He's also a building administrator down at a middle school somewhere. Right? Well, they I don't, was. Yeah, I you, was. you were, I formerly. Yeah. Here's Dr. Alcressi, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, applause. Yeah, There's yeah, nobody yeah, here. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah, Friday, yeah, 10 yeah, in the morning. 10 in the morning <laughs> that we're taping this. <laughs> it's the last day before break for the kids. Yes. Before the winter break. Mm -hmm. And Listen, you're retired. You still sound like an administrator. Once an administrator, <laughs> always an administrator. Things don't change. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it. it well, I'm not an administrator anymore, but I'm a Mets fan. Well, still course. a Mets fan. I have my Mets thing on. We have uh, yeah. your uh, well, the yeah, Mets right jersey here. here. We uh, this jersey is a 1999 Robin Ventura Russell Athletic Authentic jersey before Majestic started to um, manufacture the jerseys for the teams. Uh, uh, Russell Athletic used to do it for the Mets. He's had different kind of uh, people do it. Mm -hmm. Like I know they used to have uh, AIS at one point mm -hmm. manufactured jerseys. Then they had Rawlings do it before at one point in the early '90s because I have I have one of those jerseys. And then they went league wide majestic. So mm -hmm. I found this one on eBay. Actually, I didn't have to pay much at all for it. Actually, it's authentic. It's Robin Ventura, one of my favorite players. I miss him. He would fit great in this uh, in this, this new team, I think, because he he would be the power bat. For the lineup, well, there's essentially? A, there, there's something going out now as to uh, would you trade, who would you trade to get Troy Tulowitzki? Um, and I think uh, Syndergaard is, is uh, the name that came no, up. No, no. I don't know. No, do, do you really, no. do you trade great pitching prospects no. for a shortstop? No, 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 no. Don't no, no. do that. No, no. no the no. thing is... Leave Wilma Flores there. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. fine. Well, they just, what they can do is you can have... If if you're gonna if you're gonna get a shortstop, sign Stephen Drew for a cheap amount of money, then put him with Wilmer in platoon. Stephen Drew's a lefty bat, Wilmer's a right-handed bat, so you can just interchange them both. They're both decent shortstops. Instead of having to worry about the large contract of Tulowitzki, his injury-prone problems, and you're not losing a stud pitcher because it has been proven. And they're just they're not, we're not. Well, we're, the name of the game. Yeah, we're not blowing smoke up this guy's no. butt. This guy's the real deal. Yeah. He is. No, uh, you, they, he pitched in the Futures game, I think it was last, was it two years ago? Even last year. The guy was, the guy was closing. He hit 95 consistently. And his breaking pitches, I think, had more drop than the abyss. So, um, so uh, it, I, I, don't, I don't understand why they want to deal him for Tulowitzki. That doesn't make any sense to me. It, it doesn't really. I don't understand. No, give him no. Dylan G, give him John Neese, even hell, even give them Wilmer Flores if they want him. But I, you know, we can get someone to. Fix I don't. I don't know. You have to wonder if uh, Dylan G is 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 enough a trade bait. Well, he's twenty. It's not enough a trade bait. Trade uh, trade bait well, to get Texas Rangers. Tulowitzki. Yeah, but to get Tulowitzki. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. By know. the way, I hope we're not boring anybody here. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. I hope we didn't lose you. We're just. I'm here with you Dr. get more Cressy. information here than SMY. Yes, exactly. You know? Especially during the off season, because yeah. apparently the only thing you get is hot stove. That's it. Yeah, we do a better job than yeah, hot stove. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we could do our own hot stove. Yeah, W O R. I'm talking to you. Um, yeah. SNY, I'm talking to you. <laughs> but uh, before before we move on, I just wanted to say about David Wright. Was uh, you realize Gary Keith and Ron will probably see this? No, of course. And, and they'll, they'll, they'll want, say, yeah. "Who do these guys think they mm -hmm. are? Of we got course. retired." 
retired administrator, David Letterman wanted yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> they put up a jersey here, and that's the retired administrator's walking around with an NY on his shirt. Come on, get out of here, get these, think, get them out of here. I, I you think, know, what I think they're gonna take this, rip it off of YouTube, and send this to the uh, send this to the state police so they can arrest us. <laughs> The cutting room floor yes, where the exactly. whole the whole tape ends up on the floor. <laughs> Why am I in jail? Yeah. Because Gary, Keith, and Ron think you're a threat. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, going going on. And stop playing that SNY theme music too. <laughs> oh my goodness! But speaking on uh, speaking on David Wright, he needs to stop trying to be a power hitter. That's the thing. He is not a power hitter. My, you know, my father and I used to talk about this all the time. And when he came up, he was a gap hitter. He was supposed to get on base, and he fit well in that the dynamic of Beltran, Delgado, you know, Cliff Floyd. He fit in with that dynamic because he wasn't going to be the power guy. Beltran had power. Delgado had power. Floyd had power. So he was sandwiched right in the middle of all that, and he was able to get on base. That's why his 06 was so successful. His 07 was so successful. But since all those guys left, Delgado got hurt. Beltran was always injured. He had to, I guess, decide to be the power guy. So I think, and if you notice his swing, he has a bit of an uppercut now because mm -hmm. he's trying to hit the ball out to left field, maybe primarily. He doesn't go the opposite way anymore. That's his bread and butter. He, he has to stop that. And I wish we could send this to him because I'm sure he knows. David, we're talking to you. <laughs> but I want to ask you, um, I know I did your retirement party. Yes, you did. You did a great job. And Thank you again. I, you know, no, no, anytime, definitely. I was. Uh, <laughs> it's not any time. No, there's only one yeah. time. <laughs> That's yeah. it. it well, it's ten in the morning. Excuse me. Yeah, for yeah. Having a brain fart. But yeah. I wanted to ask you. I know we uh, we 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 corresponded with each other a couple more times. But how is retirement going? I'm not trying to ask this cliche question. I'm legitimately. No, I. Um, it's going. I'm enjoying it. I'm. Um, I get up in the morning. You I know what? I want. It. The, one of the activities that was really great at Shell School, and you know what I'm going to say, mm -hmm. this uh, we had our news program. Mm -hmm. WSMS. On WSMS yeah. TV. It was only about 10 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would get to the studio, the kids would have everything set up. Trish has to read to the station manager, train the kids, did a great job. Mm -hmm. And we play our little SNY theme there. Uh, <laughs> well, both, it's on. It's on. This is on record now, but yeah, we're going to see I, that. I know. You've yeah, been well, served. Five seconds. Of the, <laughs> yeah, you guys can get over it. Um, and we, we do our little news program, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was great. And the kids could see me in a different light, and I enjoyed. I enjoyed doing that. We had some fun uh, over the five years that I did it. I mean. One of the things I always remember is when I got pied on the yeah. air and whipped cream all over it. And, the, and the kids thought you were going to explode. The kids, I purposely did not tell the kids yeah. that that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I had one of the other administrators, it was Brian McGrath, who's, who's in, over in Edison now, but he was a vice principal, and I had it set. So he walks on the set, if you remember, and he pies me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was oh, yeah. pie day, so I got whipped cream all <laughs> over, and the kids went crazy. Yeah. You know? And it was... It was you know, I would always like to poke fun yeah. at myself. And then some of the other things we did on SMS, um, you and I went to City Field. We did a, a remote from City Field. Mm -hmm. um, we did a remote from the uh, studios we of the Pixel 11. 11. That was, yeah. So that. we did a broadcast on the set of WPIX mm -hmm. in New York. How, yeah. how, how great was that? I, I remember doing that. And, and uh, I, I, first of all, I just want to say I went underdressed. I felt so bad. And then secondly, uh, being in that desk, it's kind of intimidating in a sense. Because, sure. Because it's the real thing. Well, no, of course it is. Yeah. I mean, not like, that this not, is not, No, no, trust then, me, no. This is just know. nickel and dime crap. Don't worry about it. You're fine. <laughs> um, no, but when you're this is this is that's Broadway compared to this. Yeah. Um, no, but you're you're sitting there in a, where they have the lights just beaming, and they're really hot. I can see why they keep studios very cold because those lights are very hot, and. They're pointing these actual cameras where I don't think they had anyone behind it. They were, uh, what were they? They were uh, programmed by someone sitting off to the side. Oh, yeah, everything's um, robotic. And, it's amazing. And, and then it, what made it even worse, well, I was, you know, I was nervous, was that you had, it was a, the, the trip with the group and they were all staring at me. And they were staring at us, actually. And when you're trying to, when you're nervous and you're trying to get through something, especially if you're saying it verbatim, just right off the top of your head, because I didn't really come with anything prepared. I just kind of like... I had a whole script. You, you, you had a whole... 
uh, script slash screenplay that you could have turned into a movie and then into a Broadway play. Well, that's the teacher in me, the planner. Yeah. You know, we're in the business of planning. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Although, the news director, um, Bill Carey, was the news director Hold at on, that I gotta time. i got to pick that up. Hold on. Name drop there. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bill Carey said, "If you had given me that, I would have put it on the teleprompter." Ah. Oh. And I hadn't thought. I really didn't think of that. Well, yeah, they did have those cameras where they, they had, had the, the teleprompter. Tele right that really would have looked cool. Yeah. But I mean, you did great, and who else spoke? It was Irwin, Irwin and Destiny. And Destiny. They, yeah. they, and it was nice, and all the kids were around there, and there it seemed, was really a lot there, of fun. There seems to be a little dynamic between the four of us for some reason. I, it seems like we seem to have this sort of connection that stems yeah. through WSMS. And I guess that shows your range as, as an administrator yeah. and as a person, too, because... We, That's what we're in business yeah. for. It's not just that, you know, we, when I was an uh, administrator, when I was a te teacher, it's not just hounding the kids to do their homework or as an administrator to, you know, suspend them and all that. That's not what we're there for. We're there to mold character. Mm -hmm. It's all about character. Oh, yeah, of course. that I do at church also because uh, I've been in front of congregations either doing a reading or or talking about like fundraising because I did a lot of fundraising for them I, I think that I think that all helps oh, okay. and then I'm a bit of a television junkie so yeah. <laughs> I, I'll watch things and I'll get and I'll get some ideas from it I don't watch a lot of drama programs comedy programs I mean right now right now I'm pretty Boring. I watch the news. <laughs> I watch the prices right. This is self admitted, like by the way. Yeah, it's I just, am. <laughs> let's it is just self admitted. That way. <laughs> and I'm right now. I'm watching a whole bunch of old baseball games from SNY, waiting for spring training. I'm not a football <laughs> watcher. I don't watch basketball so much. I don't I hockey a little bit. Yeah. I think hockey is more of an interesting sport yes. than football. I can attest to that. But I'm waiting for spring training. But I watch that and I get ideas from it. Well, no. And then when we started doing that five years ago, I already had a, I already yeah, had a plan. Already, well, that, that, plan. that's the thing when you when you when you're in when you want to be a broadcaster, you know, when you're when you're interested in it, that's actually the first place you go to. For example, uh, you know, if you didn't, if anyone didn't know this by now, uh, I picked up a lot from you know David Letterman, of, of course. course. And, uh, of course. And I mean, just look at this for goodness sake, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but. You you why when you get when you delve I yourself into it? I actually think you're more the Joe Franklin guy. No, no, <laughs> come on, no, get out! Joe of Franklin was a sleeper. Get out of I here! I put him on at two two o'clock in the morning on Channel Nine when I'm trying to sleep. He goes, "Oh, so Joe Franklin, and I'll stand there on our next guest, and next guest, and I'm like this in front of the TV." It's either that or I'm Bob Salter. Uh, and I, but oh. uh, speaking of voices, um, I wanted to ask you. Uh, you, you seem to have this very distinct announcing voice, considering that you are the announcer for this program, the program that you are currently a guest on. Don't know if you knew that. Um. <laughs> I haven't gotten any money for it yet. Where's my... Where, I don't even get a residual? No. <laughs> Nothing. Low budget. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. I didn't get any money at this, WSMS. This either, is the you know? definition of bottom of the barrel. Let's put it that way. <laughs> This is talk talk about scraping the bottom. I hope of the you barrel. have the camera on me when you're saying bottom of the barrel. Here I am, <laughs> bottom of the barrel. <laughs> but I, what you, you seem to do uh, when you do the voice, at least for this program, you seem to add a little more showmanship to it. Why is that? Uh, everybody had their own little style mm -hmm. when they announced the host. Yeah. I mean, go back to Ed McMahon mm -hmm. and uh, Don Pardo. Oh, Don Pardo. Mm -hmm. well, Don Pardo had a very kind of like a rat tat tat kind of a voice, yeah. you know? Uh, That's an interesting way to describe it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, and who's the announcer for uh, David Letterman? Alan Coulter. Alan Coulter. Well, before it was Bill Wendell. That's true. Bill That's Wendell. Right. Yeah. I mean, now they, I, I kind of modeled it uh, maybe a little bit more after them. Yeah. I mean, Ed McMahon was, he is Johnny Hayo and yeah. all of that stuff. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of a pizzazz, and you have a name, 
maybe because of that double R yeah. in your last name. You have a you have a last name that lends itself to that. And I don't, and I don't remember when I came up with it. I, I was in my office back at Shell School, and you mm -hmm. came over with a with a tape recorder, mm -hmm. and we did a, a voice. Of, basically, we recorded a voiceover. Yeah, yeah. And I and I remember when I first came up with it, but it was just on the spot, mm -hmm. on the spot. Yeah. John Luke Shapiro. Oh, you know. And I, then what you started to do was you started to uh, emphasize my first name too, because I know I came a couple times to, to actually do it with you more than once, and. You would instead of just doing the last name, you would actually go into your shtick on the well, my first name too, John Luke Shapiro. John Luke Shapiro. <laughs> you know, I just what am I going to say, John Luke Shapiro? No, I mean, who cares about? I mean, you know, we yeah. got to give it a little. And it, the, yeah, it's, that was I. We didn't do that on SMS. No, no. 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 I mean, it didn't lend itself. Well, to no, that, it didn't. You know. The opportunity didn't open. You know, it's so. morning announcements, and may, maybe I. Um, I could have done something like that. Woke everybody up. Yeah, no, of but course. I mean, maybe a good would morning have increased, and give them the and give them the weather and try to sound cheery and try to make you know try to send people off on a good note in the morning. But at night, I you know we could be a little no. Of course, local. we could goof around a little bit like yeah. we're doing here. Like we're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> no, we uh, and getting paid the money that we're doing here. Yes, right? that's right. Look at all this money I have See in my hand. See the money falling from the sky oh, here. Yes, you know? this is the residuals coming in. Yeah, oh, the residuals yes. coming in. Yes, that's right. Uh, I wanted to say they that make you pay us money to shut up already. No, I'm, I'm no, sure no, they'll, no. they'll do that. No, no yeah, no, that's I'm that, sure that, they'll do that. You know. Anyone of importance finds us out, they're gonna <laughs> shut it down. Shut yeah. it down. That's it. Close it up. I wanted. I was gonna say. Uh, when you did that for the first time, because I remember I came to you and, and uh, we, the name of the the name of this very program was still Primetime Perth Amboy, and I came to you and we, we did it and I put it on I edited it together, and people were asking me, was that you doing the voice? Was that you? Like who the hell is that? I said no, that's my my friend Dr. Cresson, who's vice principal of the show. So he's like, wow, he has a really good voice. Like I said, where's he where's he from? I said he's from he's from Brooklyn. I said, oh yeah, you can totally hear it. He has a really good voice. I said. Well, yeah, I mean, the, guy's, the guy does a morning announcement program, he does nothing else, of course he's going to, you know, practice that. What else is he going to do in his office besides yell at children? <laughs> you know? I'll tell you, I used to practice the shtick in the car. No kidding. A lot. Yeah, I used really? to practice it. I mean, <laughs> I, I have a CD, you know this. Yes. I have a CD of the SNY music, mm -hmm. both the, the, the short music and the longer music. Mm -hmm. And I... I'd have it running in the car, and it was, and I would just practice doing it, or, or I would think of something that I would want to say for a future program, mm -hmm. and laugh about it and all that. I mean, people would say, wow, that's great how you just thought about that and said that off the cuff. No, there's planning that yeah. goes into it. No, you know, course. it's not, some of it's, a lot of it's off the cuff, but not, not all of it. No, of course. Well, I, especially as, as broadcasters, if you're going to, the one thing that as a broadcaster is essential, this is an essential tool is that, and this is what I learned when I did the morning announcement program at the high school, is that when you're, you're going to have something there for you, but a good broadcaster takes what he can quick off his feet and work with it. Right. So it's always good to kind of have that when you're in, like, when you're thinking about it or you have the, the, the process going on in your head where you're, you know, like, what you do, you're with your stick and you're thinking about it, what you're going to say, and it's in your head, and then you say it and you prepare it, and it sounds like you planned it, but, you know, you just came off the top of your head. That's like that you, you essentially, you, you essentially have the skill of a broadcaster inside of a vice principal's mind. I'm, I'm going to give you what I think was the definitive off the cuff that was not planned at all. Okay. Um... I'm going to go back about three or four years. We're on the set at WSMS. Mm -hmm. We're doing the morning announcements. Yeah. Mike Heidelberg had just been hired as vice principal. And he, he had asked me, he said, if it's all right with you, I'd like to come on and say hello to everybody. And I said, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a situation, a desk with two people that would sit at it, me and the student who was doing the announcements and the Pledge of the Flag. And we would do what I would call the switcheroo. We'd turn the camera to me, and I'd say something. And the, the student would unclip a mic, and the guest person would mm -hmm. come in, put the clip mic back on, yep. and then the camera would pan to the right, and there you go. There you Just go. call that the switcheroo. Mm -hmm. So we did one of these switcheroos one morning. And Mike Heidelberg 
sat next to me. Now, the principal at the time was Lorraine Morgan. Mm -hmm. Name drop again. Name drop again. <laughs> the principal at that time was, was Lorraine. And she hears us on the air. So she decides she wants to come on the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in fact, I'm hearing clop, 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 clop back <laughs> the studio. People in the classroom couldn't hear that, but I heard it. So she comes in, and so I, I gave her the moniker um, uh, general manager. General manager. Yeah, so, so she came in. I say, and I and I would introduce her, and I say, the general manager of WSMS TV. So she stood in the background, and she said whatever she said. I gave her the stick mic, and uh, and she said whatever she said, a totally unplanned, and she knocked into the backdrop. And we had a little and on our set. We had WSMS TV. We had two boards that said that. Mm -hmm. She knocked into that. Both boards fell to the ground. Crash, boom, we're still on the air. I could hear the kids in classrooms laughing. So I said something like to the effect, I said, well, you've heard of the old saying, uh, somebody bringing down the house? Well, Dr. Morgan here just brought down the set. And that about does it for our broadcast this morning. So I can hear the whole school laughing and go off the air. Heidelberg says to me, you're good. I never would have thought to say that. You're good. I, it just, it just happened. My goodness. It was basically reminded me of your inner comic. Casey Stengel yes. was the first ever guest of Kiner's Corner. Of Kiner's Corner. Mm -hmm. And he had a lavalier mic on, and he forgot to take off his lavalier mic, walked away from the set, and brought the set down. Mm -hmm. Literally. 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 <laughs> you know, yeah, I know it's a story that Ralph Kiner yeah. talked about quite a a number of times on the air. I don't yeah. remember it. I didn't see it. But it happened. But it happened. And I don't know yeah. we mentioned that's what that made me think of. So that <laughs> comment was totally off the cuff. Oh, that's a fantastic story. Before before we go, Dr. Cressy, I wanted to ask you, being a fellow uh, fellow uh, broadcaster, I guess that's I guess that's what you can call this. Um, Dr. Cressy, it's been a pleasure. Thank it's you been so a much. Pleasure and, uh, nice to be <laughs> yes. back on the air again yes. with, with with you. And only took uh, you about four years to come back. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I hope everybody has a yes. wonderful holiday season, and uh, look forward to uh, a very successful and healthy 2015. Of Thank course. you very much. You're very welcome. Yes. Thank you for this handshake. I'm gonna have to pay for that. Okay. <laughs> I hope I don't. I uh, won't wash this hand yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. We're gonna take a We're gonna take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Cause it's tough. We're in the pain. Sunshine and rain. As the world turns, life remains the same. Return of the life. Return of the life. Return of the life. Return. Life remains the same. Return of the life. Return of the life. All be mine. Once the John Luke is dead, it'll be all be mine. It'll be all mine. <laughs> I leave for a minute, the guy wants to take my desk. Well, you did keep the chair warm, by the way. Thank you for that. Okay, well then, that was weird. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm not sure if I feel safe around him anymore, but what we decided to do here now, I'm kind of apprehensive I'm doing this now because I have a feeling this guy's going to want to murder me, but what we decided to do here is we decided to, you know, as, you know, as kids, you know, kids. We went to San. We went to Santa in the mall, and when we sat next to him, he smelled like rotten beef and cheese. You know, he was just drunk out of his mind. But you know, we as kids had that opportunity to say, "What do I want for Christmas?" As adults, we don't have the chance to do this because what ends up happening is we say what we want for Christmas, and then we look like a bunch of selfish jerks, and then we get coffee thrown on us by the Starbucks barista. Don't know how that's relative to anything, but who cares? So what I'm doing now is I'm opening up a forum to adults, us adults, because I don't think anyone here is a kid, and I'm going to ask them what they want for Christmas, and hopefully they can, you know, hopefully Santa can give them their gifts, and us adults can be happy. So first up for who wants to uh, get something for Christmas is uh, Max. Oh crap! Hey everybody. <sighs> so, Max. What do you want for Christmas? 
I already got what I want to have my girlfriend and go I need. But if I had to choose something, be maybe world peace, million dollars, you're dead. I mean, um, wait, 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 what? Wait, wait, what? I mean, um, a million dollars? No, what did you say? You missed something. I said my girlfriend, I said world peace, no starving kids, you're dead. Wait, you, you, <laughs> wait, you want me dead? No, how did you get that? Dying of cracks. What? Dude, <laughs> I just came out of the bathroom and you were practically making out with my desk. Damn, the bomb didn't work. I mean, no, no. How no. <laughs> was it? It was, it was nice. It had a long dome? Yeah, that was a pretty decent crunch. You wash your hands? Yes, I did. You make what what exactly do you want? You just tell me, do you want me dead or not? Did you use this damn soap dispenser? Do you want me dead or not? No. <laughs> okay. I have to file a restraining order. Thank you, Max. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, you can get up and leave, please. Like, can you scoot over a little to the side? No, 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 no. Oh, please. Just humor me, please. I have a friend that's Russian. Do you really get to the dance to me right now? Thank you, Max. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anyone know where I can get a nice restraining order? Please help me out. Okay, next up, what do you want for Christmas? Is my good old Russian buddy Sergey. Thank you, Sergey. Come on, that. Come on down. Thank you very much. Have a seat right here. <laughs> well, position yourself now. Well, sit up straight. Come on. Sit up straight. Come on. I know you must have a little too much fun on that Sergey, but I'm telling you. <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay, so Sergey, what? <laughs> Sergey, what do you want for Christmas? Well, if they do John celebrate Luke. Christmas, do they celebrate Christmas in Russia? Yes. Okay, so what do you want for Christmas? Well, John, look, I would love to have our government come to terms and put aside their differences to resolve the issues we face. <laughs> I also want the rebirth of a new movement, one with a strong past and potential for a strong future. Prishlo vrem yer da rsiskava vazhdeni. Sovietski Soyuz budi rasti snova v novom den zahvetit blas nad birom. Stra za rodinu! Jop tvoju mat! I don't know if I'm supposed to feel happy about that or threatened by that. You can take it both ways. I see. Thank you, Sergey. Please, exit the premises now. No, no problem. Now. Please. <laughs> You're scaring me. I thought we were friends, man. <sighs> What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> um. My name is Marco from Tropoya. <laughs> Marco from Tropoya. You were my new best friend. I see. I love Marco from Tropoya. Yes, yes. He's, I, he's do you not friend. remember we met at the office party like three years ago, dude? My office, my office was the sea. I. Okay, that's enough. Okay, I, thank you so much. No problem, Marco from Tropoya. <laughs> he's my best friend. It's always nice to have a drunk friend, right? Next up, Angie. My good friend Angie. She comes in right here. So, Angie, what do you want for Christmas? Um, I want a mouse, some paper clips, a mouse pad, uh, hay from horses stable, and world domination. <laughs> Wait, you want to rule the world? Yes, with the bunnies and the hamsters and the other little cute things. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, wait. You want to rule the world with bunnies and hamsters? Duh. <laughs> Is that what you really want to ask Santa? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Maybe. Are you sure? Possibly. You're giving me that look. I think I'm kind of getting scared of you right now. What else is new? Okay, another restraining order. Thank you, Angie. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. I appreciate that. And why is it that I'm friends with crazy people? Why is that? I'm friends with crazy people. I love you, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sergey. I appreciate that. How has he not been escorted out of the building yet?
<laughs> now, finally, is my boss. Can I say your name? Careful. Okay. Well, my boss would like to participate, but he doesn't want to, you know, jeopardize anything. So, what do you want for Christmas? You know what I want? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to stop making a fool of yourself and do some damn work around here. <laughs> All you do is go on those sports sites and eat food. The team sucks. <laughs> Get it together, you're fired. <laughs> I honestly have no idea how to react to that, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> well then, it's always nice to know that I have a friend that wants cookies, paper clips, a mouse pad, hay, and wants to take over the world if we're bunnies. My best friend wants me dead. Sergey is in love with me. And I don't think anyone here likes me. No. Oh this is dining car. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break over here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Before I move on, I just want to point out that, you know, like I said, we have people here. But there's one person in particular that I've called out before, and she's doing it again. She seems to be throwing patronizing, uh, clapping at me. Rosemary, that's not nice. No es bueno. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> You'll hear from me later. All right, so I didn't really want to do this, but considering that they're, you know, generally nice people and, you know, Max needs a job. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, so uh, what I decided to do is I decided to give them another chance. JC and Max, here they are again, your late program Christmas carolers. Don't mess this up, please. <laughs> I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part work <laughs> Do you know any Kwanzaa songs? I was part Nazi. Why would I like Kwanzaa songs? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any Christmas songs. Have you ever felt a deep hatred for Johnny to Yeah. You want to go do that instead of being Christmas Carol? Okay then, alright. <laughs> wait, so wait, you mean you guys, are, you guys are telling me you guys don't know any Christmas carols? No. Jingle all the way, jingle bells, jingle bells. I know bombs all the way. Holly Jolly, <laughs> Holly Jolly Christmas, you know? I know Holly John Death. <laughs> I know a girl named Holly. <laughs> me? I know a girl named Jolly. <laughs> me, you, and your girlfriend are going to have a really big talk after this. As for you... Do you yeah. like Jolly Ranchers? No. <laughs> <laughs> These are my friends, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back with the program, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program. If the two people to my left can pipe down, maybe I can continue on with the program. <laughs> well, that is the end of our Christmas special today. Let's hear a collective groan. <laughs> so genuine. So genuine. I want to thank Dr. Cressy for being on the show today. I also want to thank um, you know, my buddies JC, Max, and everyone else, Angie, Rosemary, Idalis, for coming here, and, and George for making this uh, wonderful production. You guys yourself, give yourselves a round of applause. Go ahead. Yes. I hate my friends. I hate my friends. But 
you know, it, I guys really do. I guys do thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Really, it wouldn't be possible without you guys. I thank you guys for coming here and helping out. George, thank you really for everything for a tremendous year for production aspects and just being here on your own time. I, I really do appreciate that. Suck up. Shut up! <laughs> it's a genuine moment, you crazy bastard. <laughs> but I just want to, you know, again, thank you all. And I, I just want to wish you guys all a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Um, for those people who are less fortunate and do see the show, just remember that, you know, Take advantage of what's in front of you and just enjoy it, regardless of whether it's the standard that you want it to be or not. Remember, life is good. God gave us this wonderful earth to live on, and what we have is a treasure. And if you're down in the holiday season or whatever, appreciate it, because there's always something good in life. So again, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I want to wish everybody a very happy, blessed New Year. God bless you all, and good night. And Max... I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Merry Christmas. Dude, that's freaking awesome, man. Much. No problem, Marco. He's my best friend. Be random character? Yeah. Okay, alright, alright, I'll look at this one. All you do is go on those sports sites and eat food. The team sucks. <laughs> <laughs>